Alright, so let's talk about what it means for a movie clip to run independently of the main timeline. In this document here, I have a layer with one frame. I can't drag the playhead forward because there's only one frame in this document. And in the library, I have something called counter graphic and counter movie clip. Counter graphic is a graphic symbol that has 10 frames and each frame has a new number in it, okay? So as I scrub through the frames, you can see that number increasing. I also have counter movie clip, which is built exactly the same way, except for the numbers are blue. I'm gonna go back to scene one, and I'm gonna take the movie clip out and place it on the stage. I'm gonna take the graphic out and place it on the stage. It's also important to note that the movie clip and graphic have different icons here in the library. So let's just put them right about there. And now I only have one frame in my document, so I can't, again, scrub forward and see anything. But I'm going to test my movie out by hitting Command Return, and there I'm gonna get my Swift file. And although the main timeline only has one frame, you will see that the movie clip is playing and looping infinitely, whereas the graphic is not advancing. And so this is what it means for a movie clip to play independently of the main timeline. The main timeline doesn't have any frames, but the movie clip can still march to the beat of its own drummer, so to speak. And while I'm at it, the beat of that drummer is, I think it's 10 frames per second. Let me go to the document here. It's actually five frames per second so that you can see those numbers and we'll play it all slowly. All right, so that's how this document works with one frame. Let me go out to frame number 10 and hit F5 to add frames. And now something happened on us. Look at this. The graphic symbol advanced to frame number 10 and the movie clip stays at frame number one. Hmm. Let's jump back to frame number one and watch what happens as I scrub through the timeline. As I scrub through the timeline, you'll see that the graphic symbol is advancing with the main timeline's playhead, all right? So the graphic is sort of running lockstep with whatever is happening on the main timeline, and the movie clip is just sitting there. So it's important to note that inside of the Animate IDE, you will not be able to preview nested animations inside movie clips, but you can with graphics. Now let me export this SWIFT again, and you'll see that both of the animations are going to be looping infinitely at the same time. Now you may be wondering, why is the graphic also looping? Well, the deal with Swift files is that their timeline, the main timeline is going to loop unless you tell it to stop. So the way we tell it to stop is we'll put a little bit of an action script code on there. So I'll drop in a new layer, I'll go to the last frame, bang in a keyframe with F7, use F9 to open the actions panel, and I'll just write stop. So right now, this stop command is a little bit of action script, which you would use in an action script 3.0 file, which would export to a Swift. And I wanna make it clear that you could do exactly the same thing in an HTML5 Canvas document with JavaScript, all right? The behavior I'm illustrating in this demo is gonna be the same between AS3 and HTML5 Canvas documents. So with that out of the way, let's now test the Swift again with a stop action on frame 10 and you'll see now that the graphic is going to stop in frame 10 because the main timeline's playhead has stopped in frame 10. Now you may be asking, what's the point of this independent nonsense of the movie clip? Well, it can come in really handy if you have something like clouds in the background that you wanna loop infinitely. You can have that happen without having 10,000 frames in your main timeline. And speaking of which, I have this file here that has some clouds, a car, and a road. The main timeline only has one frame, but all of these symbols are movie clips with their own nested animations. So when I go to export this one, check it out, you'll see that we have the car with the wheels moving, the road moving, and each of these clouds animating, all right? So we have a whole bunch of animation going on, but there's only one frame in the main timeline. And again, that's because movie clips can play independently of the main timeline. It's very cool. Let me close this out. And just to show you real quick, one of these clouds here, if I double click on it, you'll see, let me shrink down the timeline here, that it's a very long timeline of a cloud moving across the stage, all right? So all of the clouds are built like that. It's about a seven second long animation. And again, all of them loop seamlessly and it looks really cool, awesome. In the next video, I'll show you why graphics are cool because they give you access to the frame picker, which makes it really easy to make character expressions. I can click on the eye symbol and go to the frame picker and choose 
any iframe that I want from that symbol. More in the next video. Hey, what's up? Real quick, if you liked the video, please consider giving a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and if you want to get notified when new videos come out, just click that little bell. Ding dong. If you got any comments, leave them below. I'll read every one and do my best to help you. Have an awesome day.